You only need this to fail to the downside, and I would imagine that that could be very disorderly. That will run us down to what we've referred to as that neckline at 65. And it'll be quite brutal and quite quick, and that could see a, quite an extensive upside move in overperformance out of uh, silver, although gold will be doing very well too. This is Kaiser Johnson, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for September 4th through September 11th, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature three different specials. One-tenth Gold Eagles at $37.50 over melt, Kilo Silver Valcambi Bars at $1.99 over spot per ounce, and your choice one-ounce Silver Rounds at just $2.50 over spot. The Gold Eagle was first released in 1986 and has been one of the most popular gold bullion coins in the world, providing incredible recognizability and investor trust. The one-tenth Eagle is additionally sought after for its high degree of flexibility and liquidity. Like the one-ounce eagle, the one-tenth eagle is 22 karat gold strengthened with copper. Its one-tenth of a troy ounce of gold comes 50 to a tube, 5,000 to a box, and is available at just $37.50 over melt while supplies last. Finally, the gold eagle is IRA eligible. Next from Valcambi, a Swiss mint known for producing some of the highest quality products in precious metals, we have Kilo Silver Bars, which are 32.15 troy ounces of 3.9's fine silver cast with individual serial numbers and a beautiful antique style finish. They are only $1.99 over spot per ounce. They come 15 to a box and are IRA eligible. And for your choice silver rounds, you may choose between the iconic silver buffalo round made by various private mints across the US and the silver Asahi round from Japan. Both three nines fine, both 20 to a tube. The Asahi rounds are also IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Francis Hunt from The Market Sniper. Francis, thank you so much for joining us today. Always delighted to be back with you, Elijah. Thanks for having me. Well, it's great to have you. I just watched one of your videos that you put out about the gold-silver ratio, and you were saying that this could really be a triggering event uh, for silver to move dramatically to the upside. Can you expand on that and maybe show us what you're seeing on the gold-silver ratio chart? Yes, we, ha we have been talking that up recently, and uh, the real reason is uh, it's got a lot to do with the gold-silver ratio, which is an intrinsic one that we like for a number of reasons. It's also a great proxy for a little bit of a risk-on, risk-off field. It plays more than just the metals role. But here's the chart, uh, and we were referring to the business end of where we are right now. So if I just pull that through a wee bit, you might notice the rather wide dashed red line. And uh, for us, there's a bit of a lean taking place at the moment. The market is playing footsie footsie with the line, like a naughty kid, kind of don't put your foot over this line, don't put over your foot over this line. And it's been tested a number of times. Uh, there in blue, there again, and there again. And just recently when I made that video, we were coming down here again. And so far, what's tended to happen, Elijah, is that we're getting a, a little bit of an electric offense effect that has been pushed away. Uh, and as again, you can see for now, uh, the movement, uh, let's go for a fatter cokey here, is, is away from this. And this is very typical of technical uh, analysis at key levels. So our underarching opinion overall is that this is a very fundamental level that is of great interest. And many people say, oh, but you know, you, you said it might be a triggering event and now look, it's going up, we need it to go down. Uh, what's very common is that any level that is tested often and is rebuffed repeatedly when it eventually breaks, breaks with real momentum. So nothing that is held really strongly for an extended period, uh, when it eventually falls, you get a major run through. So it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit, think of it in a battle context, you know, maybe, you know, World War II, a heavily dug in German defense where they really have held up and, and you know, push back and push back. But once it finally falls, then there's, you know, a massive open territory that is run. So it's a kind of a last stand in essence type feel to these levels uh, that we're seeing over here. And if I highlight this again, particularly over this period, 
Um, you only need this to fail to the downside, and I would imagine that that would be very disorderly. That will run us down to what we've referred to as that neckline at 65. And it'll be quite brutal and quite quick, and that could see a, quite an extensive upside move in overperformance out of uh, silver, although gold will be doing very well too. Uh, but just that beta is going to really, really churn up. What you can notice why is that? What you can notice is that the ability to rally away is getting uh, lower and lower and lower. So assuming this doesn't run higher than this last high, you're actually talking about a continued uh, aspect where um, the momentum away from the electric fence is getting uh, its ability to get away from it is reducing. And this is an exhausting activity. It's kind of like somebody who's caught in a trap and is getting ever more exhausted and you're hunting them down. They're running and then resting, running and then resting and you're tracking them. And each time the distance between when they're running and how far they need before they're resting again. And you can see from the foot uh, feet marks in the sand that they're resting. You can realize they're tiring. And this is why I reuse phrases like exhaustiveness. Uh, and technically, this looks like uh, an, a period of exhaustion. And the other implication is that you've got this real squeeze between these uh, big blue lines that I'm making. I'll double them up and the pink one. And that means something's going to give. So we'll quickly be proven incorrect. And we're OK with that. It's feedback. If we're incorrect and it breaks, smashes through, it would look something like that. OK, let it happen. Our suspicion, however, on balance of probabilities, given the technical assessment, that's that broadening trumpet over there. And this is that this is normally associated with continuation to the downside. Don't forget, we came all the way down historically from the 128 levels right the way down to the 65, which was our run that took gold to 2000 the first time. Um, so overall, we're biasing to this side and it, it will be abrupt. It will feel like it came out of nowhere. And so the warning to everybody is, whilst we're playing with this line and it's getting every tighter, that you know the ping pong ball is getting trapped between the bat as you, you're lowering it down. There's that kinetic energy and that tightening. Um, it'll come out of nowhere and it'll move fast. And that's going to be a very beneficial period to be in silver particularly, but precious metals generally. Now, can you expand on why you think it'll go towards the downside rather than the upside and what kind of movements you see this will really mean for silver on like a price level? Yeah. So why why up then down? Well, there's no rule that says it can't be up. Um, this is just technical analysis being what it is. We've had an exhaustive blow off. That was the March 2020 events. So it's kind of that is the gold and silvers dot com event has happened in essence. So you've had an absolute extremity in upside to the on the gold and silver, and now you're having a really powerful uh, pullback that occurred. And now we've been, since that period, roughly from 2021, I would say around about March, so don't forget the blow-off was March uh, again in 2020, that was the upside. March 21, a year later, you're at a relative low, and you've since had this weaker rally. So if I just bring a little bit of the blow off, uh, more of the blow off into view here. And I'll just clean my face there a bit. What you can spot is that the inherent momentum in this leg from that low, even if I take it from the low to the high, and bear in mind this is better captured as a what we refer to as a bit of a trumpet event, a trumpet, you can see that the ability to go up with momentum was far higher up here. Uh, heading up to the 128 mark. I can then bring that little bit in as well. We've not got enough height on that. That is real blow off power. This is different. This is grinding. It's taken an entire, from the 21st of March, uh, and that was 21, we're in the back end. We're going quarter three. Uh, we're heading for quarter, beginning of quarter four on 23. So we've actually got a full two years and we've got a half year on top of that, taking us from the end of quarter one to the end of quarter three. Uh, and we've only been able to get up to currently at this point, 83. So in relation to how much ground you covered in how short a time over there, think of it as a triangle. It's very much what uh, the geometrists among you would say, an isosceles triangle. Now the triangle is very different. 
That's how much time it's taken to get that rally through there. So it's very much the same triangle, only lying on its long side instead of standing on its short side. So what does that imply? It's an inherent loss of momentum. It's taken you far much more time uh, to do far less work, where positive work is the rally uh, to the upside. So inherently, it's uh, clearly not got the momentum and the blow off remains the blow off. So it's like a dead cat bounce uh, part the way down in the tech stock environment in 2001 after with the blow off behind you and you've sold off so much and now you're getting a weak dead cat bounce what comes next normally you get the next level of selling that takes you into fresh lows that's why uh, i say on balance of probabilities the next major move recognize we are getting a move to the upside sh uh, short term now but the next major move uh, once we break this line if we are to break that line will be to the downside rather uh, so I don't expect us to do this and then go bang and start making new highs. That would be a shock uh, for me. It's not impossible, uh, but that would be a shock. So by the time that grind line, as we call it, the basing ascending line, which is in dash there falls, you're likely to have capitulation. And what does that mean for the silver price? Because when we see the gold silver ratio falling dramatically, that typically means a strong rally for silver. What are some of the price points you're looking at there? Uh, very good question. And uh, again, uh, bringing you to the silver chart specifically, uh, which I'd certainly say represents a value proposition at the moment, possibly one of the a discount window, if you will, that's currently open and should probably be very well exploited if people are, uh, are fancy protecting their wealth from all the other uh, predatory aspects of the current financial system. Um, but we've got uh, on the silver price, we've drawn also here a pool back that represents a little bit of a head and shoulder this is a simplification you can see the price has deviated from this and this is quite this is why people sometimes get a bit impatient there's a diagram draw of a pattern and then there's what happens in the real world and many people you'll hear them say the map is not the territory it's a it's a it's a simplified version diagram of that territory and until you're stumbling along the ground yourself do you really realize that there's a marsh here and there's big rocks there etc so you can see even on the shoulders you have quite a bit of zigging and zagging in here before you hammer it out in fact we are identifying that this layer was a secondary point of support apart from the head which has been supported again on this shoulder so far at least we are again in a bit of a down leg uh, for silver at the moment and some people may giving up hope they're probably giving up hope if they are at just the last moment because this represents real value on silver if this holds and this does turn out to be the right shoulder you'll likely be staircasing your way back up and the seminal level that's really of interest is $26 on this particular pattern structure. So that will be a neckline commonly known uh, as we're a breaking through a key level. And that will trigger a $38 because the second part of your question is, Francis, what if it does go down the gold silver ratio and you do get some upside where we're we talking? I'd certainly expect some degree of rest as we start to uh, home in on the 40. Uh, remember, this is a big time frame. This is I'm using three day here. It's a bit non-standard. It's kind of 60 percent of a week. Um, I do that in purpose. But in actual fact, we've also indicated to you that as gold heads for 2,900, we see the silver chart going to that key 4550 range. And there's a, uh, a flagging target over there. So where did that come from? It's not just something we've uh, conjured up, but that was your sort of uh, your peak Wall Street silver bets from the lows of March 2020, that natural geometry that is generated technically by patterns, the amount of people that are prepared to capitulate and then later come back in and charge in, that is a demonstration of the force of the markets. How much money, how many dollars are they prepared to push it up? And that kind of force will be brought to bear again, projected from the lowest point that gives you 45, uh, which is how we typically do it. So uh, with this as a general continuation pattern, again, you're getting a $45 uh, dollar uh, range out of that pattern, uh, which will be post this inverted head and shoulders making target, a bit of a rest, and then again, a bit more upside. So I think it's it's broadly pretty uh, positive. But you remember a three-day chart, that's a single candle is taking three days. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not an overnight event, and we've got to work our way back. 
So if I were to refer to the slightly lower time frames, because people will be saying, but, but we're going down right now. What do we want to see? We want to see this level hold. You can see I'm highlighting uh, the, the multitude of touches that was as a secondary support point. And that's in and around, uh, let me make sure I get the value exactly right. It's in and around $22. So we can pull back and we're fine as long as we stay north of $22. And as over here on the shoulder, I highlight again, you came down, it wasn't over. You went up, you came down, it wasn't over. You went up, it came down again, it wasn't over. So when you tend to get this complexity and multitude of testing on one shoulder, it's often replicated again on the other. In other words, the market's telling you what kind of a guy it is. If I have a hairy left forearm, it's likely I have a hairy right forearm. And in the same way, we're going to get that little bit of, you know, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And I think that's what precious metal investors are feeling right now. Are we there yet? You could go one or two more times, but at some point you're going to be back at that $26. And that's when things get really interesting. I'd expect that line to be broken with momentum normally as well. So it can move fast and through 26 by some degree. And it looks like that will really be coming to a head, really the end of that last shoulder will coming right around the end of the year, beginning of next year. It could be. This is a diagram, as I've mentioned, diagrams, maps and territory. Um, it could be every time I try workout times, I'm like everybody else. Can this happen already? Um, and unfortunately, patience is required. So that's a guide. It's a guide. If you're prepared to accept it on that basis, it's a guide. It could be earlier, could be a little bit behind. Of course, while we're heading down, everyone's a little more pessimistic. They'll be pushing that out. It reverses very violently like it did here. So if I just drop the time frame and show us, show you a little bit more detail on that uh, right shoulder, you can, you can see we've actually had small reversals that have performed here. For example, we drew this one. That was a head and shoulder again. That was an interaction with that level, which was 22.95 and 22.95. That smashed its way to target and went very, very strongly. And you see what I mean when I say break with momentum. Look at that candle. That's a great candle. You know, you're languishing here. You're languishing and you're hating it and you're hating it. But next thing you know, bum, 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 squeezing higher, making little smaller targets for you to trade. And then a bit of exhaustion. We warned that wick. It's a bit of exhaustion that's coming in. And what do you get? You, you Silver, so beta, high beta, all the way back down again. So it, it's kind of a great trading metal because it goes up and then it retraces back down. But the moment will come where it'll be single-minded on most time frames in one direction. And I, I'm expecting that to be to the upside. And I'm expecting a similar type candle as this 22.95 break only on the bigger time frame at $26. So this could start to be the point where it starts to hammer a low out again. It wouldn't surprise me as it's done so previously a number of times. So watch that 22. Anything in the, starting with 22 is, is, is represents value. Of course, it's 22.97. I, I think it represents very good value as a purchase right now. Now, it seems like also at the same time, we're seeing a decrease in inflation if you look at the official numbers. But you've stated that you really see a reversal here because of higher energy prices, higher oil prices. Um, we could see a resurgence of inflation. And that and that seems to be going along. I mean, that's kind of a fundamental aspect of, of what you're talking about technically of a rise in the metals. Um, can you talk about kind of why you see, a, again, a surge of in inflation coming soon? Very good question. And this it takes energy to dig holes in the ground. Uh, and actually, some chartists um, have illustrated that in, to some degree, silver is a lagger, a laggard in moves, although it will have a higher beta than oil, to oil as well. Because as the costs of oil go up, so do – oil is also representing dollar weakness or loss of confidence in the fiat as well. So as a commodity, it's an anti-fiat uh, uh, proxy. And what you can see is that we're seeing reversals now in uh, oil. Again, a uh, lot of reversals here. This is a shoulder. It's a little bit of a complex head. It's a W. And then you came back up to here. That's again that key level. And you've got another shoulder there. And you're breaking and you're heading. By the way, that oil target is 106. 94 in dollars. And you're at 87 at the moment. So if that turns out to be the case, 
that's going to be good actually for precious metals. It doesn't feel good at the pump, I'm aware of that. Um, and don't forget, uh, Elijah, this is happening while the dollar is actually being quite dominant. So think about what it means for Europeans, British, uh, Chinese, whose currency is also being hard effect, uh, affected now, Koreans, etc. So oil going up in dollar means it's really going up in all the other currencies whilst we talk about the dollar index, which I'll just include in that chart share as well, just to put some perspective on it for you. The dollar has actually been overperforming. It's in and around the 105. So you can see this uh, period as well here. Uh, it smashed down, ran the technical 100 level, we felt at the time that that could be a move down to 97, absolutely reversed, changed, and is actually blasting its way up. Now, you also asked about the BRICS. And uh, one thing I do feel, and this happened as the euro got introduced, I want to remind people of this, is that the dollar came out super strong when anything that represented any form of rival was around. And I suggested last time we spoke that that would be the case again. Uh, and that is exactly what's transpired. I mean, we've gone from 99s on the Dixie, uh, which is against mainly the euro, 52% the euro. You've got a bit of pound in there. You've got a bit of Swiss franc and a bit of yen in there. Um, uh, that is quite a convincing bit of price. And, and I, I hesitate to mention that the Chinese uh, yuan or rimbi is also losing ground against the dollar. It's not in the dollar index as well. So it's not just Western European suck. Um, it's globally that the dollar has been one of the more dominant currencies on most days in this period since here. So it's understandable that silver gets a little bit of a, a coming of off uh, when you've got such strength. But you're seeing now oil is turning up, energy costs are turning up generally. If you look at our natural gas, uh, which we've also referred to, it looks like a bit of a reversal, much lower down, but we're now coming into autumn and going for the buying season again. So I would see inflation, people who are thinking you win on the inflation are gonna be caught out repeatedly. Uh, on top of that, you've got the yields are high and America is leading on uh, debt markets in terms of the yields uh, that are being charged on in the currencies game. Uh, so it's going to keep the dollar hot. And in spite of that, energies are going up in dollar terms. Uh, so that's going to have a, a lot of effect on miners. They're going to need higher prices. You've got to break ground. You've got to dig big holes. And of course, I expect that to bring uh, the metals markets alive as well, because cost is coming up under production price uh, immensely. And eventually, it, you know, it's non-feasible and production drops because it's just a poor business to be in. And many will say it's been that way for a long time. And that's what you see also in the miners, too. So it's, it's backed up by the miners performance so far. And when it comes to inflation, kind of on a longer term a time frame, you did mention the BRICS expansion, which we were talking before we hit record here. Um, your perspective on how that's going to impact the value of the dollar long term, because obviously we're seeing the dollar pretty strong right now compared to other currencies. But the BRICS have explicitly talked about, you know, using local currencies in trade. And now you know, the uh, inclusion of Saudi Arabia, Iran, Egypt, Argentina, United Arab Emirates, it's like this this block is expanding um, and the move towards de-dollarization is, is very apparent. It's not only expanding, it's important to note that it's very heavy in energy producers as well. So remember, for the likes, as you were asking, Saudi Arabia, Iran, uh, Russia, obviously, with its gas and its oil holdings, you have, they actually already have a form of currency, and that currency is let's just say oil for now, for a simplistic model's sake, rather than getting into every single one of them, but that is going up against the dollar. So even if um, their relative fiats are slightly underperforming, they are net producers and exporters of that product, and it's going up in value in dollar terms. And those nation state currencies, no countries no longer wish to be net accumulators now that they're changing team, particularly like Saudi, of treasuries. So um, what that means is uh, the, the Fed is going to have to become the buyer of last resort. And there is an absolute huge amount. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Daniel DiMartino Booth was highlighting in a tweet that I think, I don't know over what time period, I think it's the next 
X months. That there's, uh, it could it could be a year. Call me. Uh, I don't want to misquote. So this part's a bit sketchy, but it's no longer than a year. There's a, there's a, there's around seven trillion in bonds. Seven trillion in bonds that need uh, rolling. A lot of the the debt that was created more recently has been shorter term. So it's coming around. It's coming around, and that needs refinancing at much higher rates. So this is this is devastating for interest rate payments. Um, you know, that, I think that recently crossed uh, the military industrial complex spend for the government again on interest rate payments. Now you're going to have this extra lump and a shelf of debt. That isn't a small shelf. I mean, that is huge. That is literally the entire stimulus of the March 2020 uh, that, was, that was put out or declared put out. Let's forget the bank bailouts that went to everybody that no one talks about. Uh, six, six to seven trillion to be refinanced. I mean, that's horrific. So the energies, the BRICS are winning with their oil currency. I mean, South Africa doesn't benefit too much from that. They're not oil rich, um, but and neither possibly India. But Russia uh, will. And of course, the, the new BRICS, zone two, uh, that are coming on board are going to be very heavy. Essentially, you're going to have OPEC plus on one side of the fence uh, and America on the other. And you know, uh, probably needing to import as well, no longer uh, independent. And you've got your strategic petrol reserve that has been run down uh, a fair degree as well, that's gonna need replenishing at higher prices. Not a good combination. Now, if we could then turn to how people can be, well, obviously people are aware of these trends that have um, that are taking place right now. What are some of the preparations in your view that people should be taking right now? So sound money uh, is, is, is the driver behind all decisions uh, for an independent while we are going through what is clearly going to be some form of a transition period, which is likely to reap havoc, mayhem, lead to potential social unrest and a lot of other things that can take us into quite reset based topics. But being secure and stuffed with sound money, because the best the best money for bridging, and I've referred to it as the golden arch from the legacy old rickety old iron horse railway to the new super slick monorail that they're going to be selling you in its surveillance finance beauty uh, is going to need to be uh, precious metals. But I do expect that holders of precious metals should prepare for the eventuality of a clipboard event where you will have to tokenize confess and declare ownership uh, of those uh, said metals as part of monitoring who holds what. And that information can and will be used against you at a later event once they've made sure that everybody has owned up. So I could argue that there could be a case for, uh, depending on where you stand on legalese or morality versus legalese, to potentially hold some dark metal as well as some formalized. The problem you will have, I expect, though, is they'll make it very difficult for the sale of dark metal uh, because it'll all have to be registered and anybody purchasing will be under some force of some crooked bent law uh, as if to make to make you look like um, the, you know, peddlers or money launderers or anything else. And then uh, extraction could take place against metals if it is then acknowledged at a higher level and there is a step gain um, by virtue of a declaration by decree or it trades up to uh, a new level, you could be deemed privileged for having been able to make that investment. They may turn the narrative and say, well, you benefited by getting in at this low price. In actual fact, it shouldn't have been that low. And now actually, you know, you're kind of privileged for it and it's time you, you paid some tax. Uh, on that. So I think you could end up in a scenario where there's uh, black uh, gold uh, and silver and official tokenized gold and silver, which will then be required to be pledged at some vault where you can go and touch it like a museum piece every now and then, but will be exchanged by NFT uh, in real time. And then that way they will control again all the holdings and they could reinstate uh, another mechanism of uh, price manipulation if they end up being uh, the overall 
even if it's not the holders and owners themselves, they know where everything is and where it's physically held, we would again set them up in a position where they could dominate the price on that. I think a lot of people are cautious because of that reason uh, for to investing in precious metals because they're cautious uh, to invest in precious metals because they're like, well, what if the government confiscates it or puts, like you said, all these regulations on it? But I think it comes back to like that that's not happening right now. And it's better to have it than not to have it, right? Um, so we can't we can't control the future uh, in, in those large respects. I mean, obviously we can we have our part to play in our our government and everything. But on the big picture, there's a lot that is out of our control. But what we can do right now is acquire precious metals. Um, and regardless of what the future holds, it'll probably be better to have it rather than not. And anything that they do elect to do, they wouldn't just go straight to confiscation. They'd have to come and make some deal of offer. Uh, and it would have to have some element of lucrativeness. I don't think you'd necessarily get the fullness, but even still, you're likely to be better off for having them. Um, you won't just go to instantly being a, a rogue baron that must be uh, have the tanks roll up to your, your you know your lawn and your house strip searched or uh, digging under your pool. There, there will certainly be a multitude of opportunities to uh, to to take. I think at least somewhat favourable decisions that could still put you in a significantly better place in the new system for having taken that. I mean, there is a little bit of an element. You're a bit too smart in class with teacher and she slaps you down a little bit for trying to be too smart or more. But it's still better to uh, have some essence of smarts, if you can uh, forgive the coin, the phrase. And uh, I would I would like to see uh, and I would imagine that government will will still recognize some element of the upside. I do just feel that they're going to want to bring it all on grid. In short, the one thing that worries me about the likes of the CEO of BlackRock is these guys are going for creating derivatives over all assets. People think it's crypto and it's just CBDCs. The whole game of throwing you out of what you own means everything needs to have a digitized avatar. You know the film? Yeah, well, avatar isn't going to have such a positive association when you start talking about NFTs and tokenization. In short, the bicycle that your son rides will be sold with a token um, and, you know, even your vehicle, et cetera, et cetera, and your home. And I do think that they uh, will try and make purchasing of assets far more easier uh, on the blockchain. And they'll probably be the buyer of last resort in many instances. So when you have a lot of off grid assets that aren't tokenized, one of the key things they do is to collect information first and then require that you go through certain procedures of tokenization. And of course, we're even hearing about possible chips in coins in the Australian mint and things like that. So almost assets that will rat you out for want of a better phrase uh, if you don't declare them so this is a worrying development for me and that tells me that you know at some point you have to have prepared mentally for that and it's still the best thing to be doing because they're going to have to offer you a, a, a deal but i'm just not sure as to whether we'll all get exactly what we expect in the fullness of you know silver going to a thousand dollars Maybe some of these steps will come in before and they'll come with hefty tax bills as well. And maybe it won't go the full way uh, and they'll end up sitting on a lot of it by de facto control, uh, hypothecated control inside their own official vaults or private corporations that are actually part of the quasi corporate uh, network, kind of like how we view Microsoft, Apple, Google and those uh, those corporations subject to government decree and passing on of information. All right. Well, Francis, we really appreciate your time today. If people are interested in learning more of the insights you bring, um, they can go to Market Sniper, themarketsniper.com. And also you're on active, active on Twitter and YouTube. We'll put the links in the description of this video. And just also a disclaimer, obviously, to everyone watching is we don't give any financial advice. This is you know our own perspectives. We're not guaranteeing any future performance or anything, but we do appreciate all the insights that you bring to us um, once a month or so when we have you on, uh, Francis. So do you want to share with the viewers a little bit about what you do? Yes, we think that this is a, a, an abnormal period. It's the end of cycle and a rotation into a new cycle. We think that 
like never being allowed your own money, we're actually moving into a period where you'll never even be allowed your own privacy, that most things are being stormed in. And we feel that people should resist as best they can to do that. And we're interested in the building of wealth in a mechanism that can do the most that is possible for people that are in a community environment, A, wanting sound money, and B, wanting government out of their lives and to reduce the amount of information data that they provide about their wealth and everything else on the basis that it's not their right to know everything. We are free human beings. So that's what our community is about. Um, jump on the YouTube channel, which is the Market Sniper. Uh, and we also have the Crypto Sniper if you're interested in that area uh, and follow our views. We're, we're, we will trade and invest. When I say trade, we're not you know, uh, on 15 minute charts. We tend to look at the bigger position view and hold uh, for a long time. So it's, it won't take over your uh, lifestyle in any way. Thanks very much for having me on and good luck to everybody. And uh, yeah, good September and October. Let's see with that gold silver ratio can bring that uh, impulsive move for all the stackers. Fantastic. Francis, once again, thank you so much for your time and God bless. Same to you. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.